Chris Gaffin here with the One Legged Monster. We just finished our arm workouts. We're not pro probably not looking too energetic right now. <laughs> We're barely fucking uh, sitting down. So I'm just having my post-workout shake. He's gonna wait a little while before he gets something in his stomach. This is the first time we've got together. We just stayed in touch and now we've got our workout in. But you do have an inspiring story. Now, to those watching here that don't know anything about us, or about you, just tell us a little bit about your background and then how you got into this yeah. whole thing. So, uh, yeah, I was in the military, I was in the army. I was a grunt, so an infantryman. Um, I was in for almost 10 years when I got medically retired, but uh, did two tours. My first tour in 0506 to Iraq. Uh, came back, re-enlisted, became a sergeant. Um, 2009, 2010, I was sent to Afghanistan with my new unit uh, out of Washington State. And uh, I was there for a whole year, was about ready to come home. Uh, went out on my very last uh, night patrol. And uh, when we were out on that patrol, the vehicle that I was commanding was hit by a pressure plate IED. So it's basically like when something rolls over the top of it, it just fucking explodes and destroys whatever is on top of it. And so that being me, <laughs> you know, was on top of it. Uh, uh, yeah, we got blown up. Next thing I wake up and I just realized that, okay, something was bad. I can't feel my legs, you know. How many of you were in the in There the was 12. And I took the, but it was a targeted attack kind of a thing. Uh, basically, the enemy knows from how far that tire is from how far I am standing out of the hatch. And they know whoever's standing out of the hatch is the highest ranking one in that vehicle. Ah, they couldn't point so that much. Yeah, fucking Google, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, yeah, they probably yeah. went on there and found out, like, just get the measurements or track. They're, they're smart. They're not fucking stupid people. And, um, and so, yeah, it just detonated directly underneath where I was standing and uh, came all the way through. And then pretty much when I woke up, I just couldn't feel my legs. Um, I was pretty much pinned down and I had a lot of um, like burning going on in my legs and stuff like that because batteries and whatever else was burning all in my legs. And uh, so I'm, I deal with second and third degree burns all down my quads as well. But um, first thing I started doing was yelling at my soldiers to get out of the vehicle. And uh, as soon as they got out, I tried to get myself out and I realized like, oh, I can't move, you know, I'm pretty fucking bad. And so I started like assessing myself. And I had my leg at the time, but it was um, basically just mushed, like the bones were just done. Yeah. And then my um, right leg, it was all there, it was good. And I was like, all right, we're good, what the fuck's going on? And I just couldn't move. And so two of my soldiers came back in, picked me up, and started dragging me out. And then I realized like this leg was just kind of swinging around. So I dislocated my whole knee and I had to have it reconstructed as well. And then this one, I just still couldn't like even feel it at all. Um, long story short, I got medevaced then got medevac from the, uh, Afghanistan to Germany, and then from Germany to uh, the States, and I was at Walter Reed, which is the main yeah. hospital for the military for severely wounded, and so um, I, was, I went through about six months of uh, recovery trying to save my leg, and then in November 2010, I decided, I was like, fuck this, just, just take, cut it off and let me just start over, you know, and uh, the pain was just so bad, you know, like they had a halo, which is like, it's a thing that it's like a cage that goes around your leg and it just has these pins, I go into it, hopefully, in hopes to fuse the bones back together. But uh, even after they took that off, I was in so much pain. I was, it was just, the, the chance of me doing what I'm doing now, probably literally impossible. I just wouldn't be able to handle it. And so I just made the decision one day to just go ahead and amputate it and did. And uh, I haven't regretted it, you know, at all. And did you deal so, with phantom pain at all? I did, for a long time. Um, it took me, honestly, probably like six, seven months to get over the phantom pain, I'd say really weird how funny the mind is and, and it comes and I use that for when I do what I do now like powerlifting or lifting weights the mind because what I realized was is I had phantom pain and that's all nerve stuff so it's mind nerve that's what controls the nerve you know and so it was as soon as I got my socket and I put my leg on I was my eyes looked down and I saw a foot there's no phantom pain because my mind thinks oh he has a foot so the phantom pain for me went away um, and then you know eventually sometimes at night when I take it off I'll feel it because obviously I don't have my leg on when I'm sleeping yeah. But yeah, I just, my eye sees a foot and I don't have the phantom pains. When I'm That's like amazing. That. Yeah, and so started rehabbing. Um, at that whole time I was going through rehab to try to learn how to walk on this, this leg was still, um, my knee was still just like uh, unstable. I hadn't had knee uh, reconstruction yet. So I went about a whole year and a half with um, an unstable knee because I had to learn how to walk on this so I could crutch around uh, on this leg to rehab yeah. this leg. So it was two years of just surgeries, and then I ended up having like 38 surgeries within two years to get my whole body back to normal. Um, three years of full rehab to be able to like leave the army and live on my own. So I lived in a hospital on and off for three years. And then um, uh, came home and uh, 
really had nothing to do. I was, you know, I didn't have a job. I got pushed out of the military. I wasn't getting paycheck yet. I have a wife, I have a daughter. Um, I had been on uh, Oxycontins, methadone, you name it, everything for so long, and they were still giving it to me, so I got addicted to them, you know? And then I got depressed because I couldn't work, I couldn't do nothing, and so I just sat around and I was just, just taking pills, playing video games, just doing shit, and just basically, literally letting life go by. And I had an eye, I had an eye opener, I've told the story many times because my daughter, and I get like emotional because my baby, you know, but I had like an eye opener with her because we went to Disneyland for her birthday and uh, I couldn't even walk Disneyland. I was in so much pain. And it wasn't that I couldn't, it's just that I had let myself go so far that I you wasn't- given up? Yeah, I just wasn't conditioned at my, you know, and I'm sitting there like, this is bullshit. There's double amputees running marathons and I can't walk fucking Disneyland, you know? And uh, it basically like, it, it, it ruined the whole weekend kind of a thing. You know, it wasn't as fun as it should have been. And so I told my wife, I looked at her that, at that Disneyland, and I said, when I get home, I swear to God, I'm gonna make this right. I'm gonna fucking get my shit together. Got home, got rid of every narcotic in my house, every pill, got rid of everything. Next day, started going to the gym. I went through days of withdrawals, but still go to the gym. And then the gym became my drug. And I just started feeling really good about myself. And Everything started coming into play, and then I, people were just freaking out. You know, I was insecure, so I wore sweatpants. So I was only like 170 pounds. I wasn't strong. I'm a fucking man. We all have egos. You know what I mean? And so uh, one day, I, somebody saw that I was an amputee, and we started talking, and they were just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, it's incredible what you're doing. Like, you should start a social media or Instagram and, and like, inspire people. And so I set out to do that because I've been where most people have been. I've been at that low point. I've been on like the drug addiction side, you know, and I've been everywhere that anybody could possibly be. So I figured, I'm gonna put my body through hell and I'm gonna do whatever I can and hopefully it can change somebody's life and that's what I've been doing for two years now. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and do you do anything like with the military in specific? Because yeah, I mean, you get a lot of amputees no, that come out of the- I get a lot of amputees mostly. Um, there's a couple of military organizations that I will work with and do things with. Um, but honestly, it's just, it's, it's, I get a lot of amputees, um, but I get a lot of people that are just pure, flat out inspired period, you know? It, they, they don't have overweight, to be amputees, don't have to be, amputees, be overweight, depressed, whatever. And uh, the one thing that I told myself was, is because of what I'm trying to do is, I'm gonna use the social media to do that. I'm, I'm going to talk to everybody as much as I can. I don't care if I have 1.2 million followers one day. I will take the time to go through my DMs, respond back to people. Um, I mean, I literally have had multiple people write me, be suicidal bound, and me catch it and respond back to them and talk to them fucking call, call me, I don't care, we'll figure this out. And now to this day, the six months, seven months, eight months later, their life is like changing because we, we chatted, you know? And so, uh, and, and that means more to me than anything. And so it's, all of this has just become a big addiction for me. And then I've met, you know, you, Michael Hearn, Michael Sheets, CT, and everybody just gotten around me and they see what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, I've just, and they're all about it. Everybody's about it. And that's what, I mean, that's what the fitness industry is about. It's pure motivation, pure inspiration from all of us. We all have our own way of doing that. You know what I mean? It's just I have a, a crazier story to kind of. Yeah, you do. You, know you do. I mean? But that's good. That's even that's awesome and inspiration for yeah. people such as myself, my girl, and everybody yeah. because we all have the days where we think, "Fucking hell!" You know, like I went for a run this morning yeah. and I was like, "Man, my knees playing up." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then I just think about you and it's yeah. a gut check, yeah. and I was like. Fucking shut the fuck up yeah. and condition your resolve and it ain't that bad, you know? Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. That's what really inspired me during this workout yeah, because, yeah. you know, we're guys, we always have a bit of a competitive course, nature uh, between each other, you know? But like I look at you now and I'm thinking, man, that is motivating me yeah. even more. Like what is surprising to me, you know, because I don't know how this contraption works. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, that must be hard to get your balance and coordination. But now you telling me that you had reconstructed surgery on this knee right. as well yeah. and doing the squats that you're doing. Dude, yeah. It's like, what do the doctors say? Oh, they're about not. That? They're not happy. They they still they can't handle it. <laughs> they yeah. just can't handle they're it. Right. They're right around it. My thing is like, I've already been blown apart, put back together. I'm down to get blown apart underneath some iron and get put back together. You know what I mean? I tell you, I I, I love it that much. That I, I mean, CT have talked about this. I said I would rather die getting crushed under iron than die not doing shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's like I've already blown this knee out. I mean I've already had the worst of the worst. What possibly really more can come, you know what I mean? Blows out, put it back together, we'll do it again, you know? And it's taken me eight months to be able to do that squat. You know, it's realistic, it's like I've been told like it's, it's physically gonna be impossible for you to be able to do squats. And I was like, fuck you, watch me. You know, I'm gonna fucking do it. And it's taken eight months of training, core, uh, a lot of rehab, a lot of uh, 
chiropractor sessions, muscle massage, you know, therapy, a lot of things. So how to get to the point to where I'm at? How long have you actually been doing more powerlifting training as opposed to just your conventional I've been, uh, bodybuilding? Eight months. I've been powerlifting. Just eight months. Just eight months. Is that it? Yeah, I was. I was. Let these guys know what your lifts are so far. Uh, I'm sitting like around 600 deadlift. I'd say like a 500 squat and like a 440 bench. That's unbelievable for anybody, let alone somebody yeah. who's an, a, an amputee. Yeah, and I'm gonna try to compete. I'm gonna try to be the first amputee to compete in the uh, in full power in the open division in October. Uh, I'm gonna try to do like a 640 deadlift. I would like to do like a 550, 600 squat, and then like a 450 bench press, and then hopefully those numbers will qualify for me for nationals. And then be the first amputee to ever go compete at nationals. And when I and when I compete, I compete in the open division. I compete against able body athletes. Yeah. That's the one thing that I try to do is like I do, I want people to realize like especially amputees because a lot of these amputees they get this whole well, I'm adaptive shit. Yeah. No fuck that. You can be normal. It's just gonna be harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'd rather compete against able body athletes and whoop their ass to compete against like amputees and. You know what I mean? It's just more of a challenge for me. That, and, that and, makes complete sense. And that's what I wanted to do. And, and it also, it just proves a point. Yeah. You know? And a lot of the people that told me that there's no way I'm going to be able to do that, they're going to get to watch it in October. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So, so where do you get this mentality from? Because like, as you, you know, may notice, yeah. as we go through the generations, it becomes softer. You yes. know, everybody becomes a product of their environment, and now this environment becomes softer. And people are, I see it all the time. Yeah. Like, you don't, you really get the mental intensity yeah. that you once did in the gym. 10, 15, 20 years ago. Like, is this from your upbringing? Is this from your military background? Both, both. My, my, my family's old school, you know. My grandpa was a World War II veteran, just when men were men, that's what they, you know, yeah. say about those guys, you know. Make me, like, and I remember I was young, he made me go get my own switch to bring back to him before he whooped my ass with it, you know what I mean? He'd make me go pick it out, you know? And my dad was the same way. My dad was military and uh, uh, he was a correction officer, so just very strong-handed, you know? and. And, uh, but he raised me to be like, just not a quitter. I wrestled and I played football my whole life. And uh, I mean, I was in high school getting up at four in the mo morning, running to school to lose weight and him following me in a car. And if I slowed down a little bit, he would literally hit me with the car, yeah. you know? So it was part of that. And then, then the military, you know, what I did in the military, the job, my job, it's very mental. And uh, I mean, hiking up mountains with hundred pounds on your body, you gotta go, you know, you gotta fucking do it. And so, yeah, just the mental toughness. And yeah, I think you're right. I think it has softened up a lot, you know? And uh, I think that has to do with a lot of people's upbringing, you know? It's a, a lot, lot of people's parents, upbringing. Lot, yeah. The parents don't give as much attention to their kids nowadays, it seems like. I guarantee you, my daughter will be harder than most dudes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the, the way I raise her. Yeah. You know, I, 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 the fatherly love's there, but the strictness is there too. There has to be the strictness and the yeah. discipline because a lot of people, they show that love yeah. by giving them too much space yeah. to allow them to do what they want. Yeah, and then the thing, I, like me, there's, we, I've never had to spank my daughter or nothing. All I do is just raise my voice a little bit and it's just like she knows. Yeah. It's just the way, I th I just, like I said, it's, I think it's... Work the for way me when you're raising your voice to me, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to spank me. I was, yeah, I tried with Danny Reardon yesterday, and she was deadlifting. I just started, you know, I, I just started screaming. I was just like, I could have lifted like a hundred more pounds if you were screaming at me, you know. I mean, that's, I just like that stuff, man. It's it's a passion. It's it's, it's uh, I love it. I wake up every day thinking about it, and I go to sleep thinking about it, you know. And, and this is what I love doing now. So. Hopefully that motivates people. I'd rather, I want to put my body through hell to motivate people. Yeah, exactly. Because a lot of people learn from observation. Right. Kids learn from observation. Adults do yeah. too. So they observe you doing these things. Yeah. All of a sudden, what the fuck's their excuse? Exactly. They can do it. They can get their ass up into the gym. Because, you know, one of the things that I mentioned, I've you know, lived in third world countries. Yeah. And people cry and moan about the food that they're, that's yeah. on their place. Like, you've fucking got food, dude. Yeah. Stop crying and moaning. Yeah, exactly. You're able enough to get to the gym. Yeah. Take advantage of yeah. it. You know, instead of, like you said, sat in your ass watching Life go by now. That's literally what happens. You wake up and it's gone. Yeah. You only get one. Exactly. You, know, you can't yeah. turn. I haven't seen a time machine yet, so <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, and that's the way I do it. I just try to live. I live my life fast. You know. I'd rather have a fast life and just look back and be like, "Fuck, that was awesome." Yeah. You know, than sit back and be like, "Fuck, I played video games for five years of my life." You know. Leave that to everybody else, yeah. man. Well, hopefully we can get their asses out of the seat as well with your inspiration. I think yeah. what it is is just like, you know, that people have insecurities and you just gotta get fucking past that shit. You know what I mean? Like, fuck the insecurities. We all started somewhere. All of us. I mean, every single one of us is, where are you gonna finish at? You know what I mean? And that's the ultimate goal. Set that, set that mind, set that goal, and fucking accomplish it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the inspirational shit right there from everybody. Anybody can be inspirational. It's just how you're gonna do it. You yeah, I mean? you gotta apply it. Like you said, you know, I, one thing I always say is every book on the shelf, 
is useless. Yeah. Unless you would pick it up and be inspired by it and apply yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah, and you put yourself around inspirational people or motivational people. You, you know, you are who you surround yourself with too. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if you sit around gangsters, you become a gangster. Yeah. Sit around druggies, you become a druggie. Sit yourself around athletic, motivational, you know, people with like, you know, being an entrepreneur, that's what you become. I've tried, you I've know? tried hanging around sexy people, it doesn't work yet. Me neither. Yeah. I think my beard scares them off. Yeah. <laughs> I know you did quite a good job with your beard, you know, you talk about how hardcore you are, I think you are a bit of a metrosexual. You well, you, I was working out with you today and you're always beautiful in your video, so I yeah. had a condition for this morning. I tell you what, I yeah. suffered for that art today, <laughs> though when I had the hair wax and I started sweat, yeah. sweating into my eyes. Yeah, I did that not do that. I've done that. That's why I wore a hat today. I've done that. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, we're here for a couple more days. It's I'm gonna sure we're going to have some crazy ass sessions to come up, so our bodies will be battered, but we'll be more conditioned from it when we go back home. All right. Well, thanks for the training session, monster. Appreciate and it, man. Let us know what are you doing now. Where can people find you on your socials? Uh, yeah, that? I'm on Instagram. That one leg monster. T H A T. The actual number one leg monster. And then um, I'm getting ready to start a podcast up. Um, it'll be starting here in the next couple weeks. Episodes are already going. Um, I just gotta load them and drop them. So be on the lookout for that. I'll post that when it is available. Um, it's gonna be just raw footage, the Howard Stern and Joe Rogan of the fitness industry nice, radio. That's like basically what it's gonna be. So uh, I look forward to everybody listening to it, and hopefully you guys can give me some input on uh, what you guys think when you hear the, hear the first episode. So should be good. Appreciate it, man. Had a blast. Look forward to that. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video. Anyone more like this, you know what you gotta do. You gotta hit like, comment, and subscribe.